for tuning in today to episode 114 of This Week in Grip. This is Jed Johnson from DieselCrew.com. Of course, you know they call me Napalm. I'm joined today by teammate Professor Crowbar, James Rodriguez, as well as a special guest. Let me ask you a question. Are you a stats kind of guy or gal? Do you like diving into statistics of your favorite sports? Well, today we're going to do just that with a deep dive into the statistical record of the King Kong of Grip contest. We're joined again by Andrew Pankey, co-creator of King Kong, along with Eric Rusain, who wasn't able to make the call. But we're going to see how the competition has changed over the years, how much has actually stayed the same and a bunch more related to its storied history. Also, next week, set your calendars, because we're going to be joined by the newly crowned Queen Kong of Grip, Sarah Chapelo. And if you have any questions for Sarah, please put them in the description box below. We might just select your question for the podcast, brother. Don't forget, you can support this show by liking the video right now. You can also support the channel by going into the description box and checking out the various links that are there. It's filled with many different resources to help you become as good as possible in grip sport. And make sure to subscribe to the channel for notifications of new videos that are coming your way. Comment to take part in the discussion. And share this video with your friends who are into grip training because after all, the first rule of grip sport is you tell everyone about grip sport. Gentlemen, let's get started. Andrew, thanks for joining us again. Andrew produced this amazing stat sheet that he calls King Kong of Grip Historical Record. And I think there ought to be a way that we can make this available in the description box. Andrew, is that okay if I, uh, yeah. If I do that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Okay, I didn't yeah, know if this was uh, was this available anywhere else. Is this posted on the grip board or, or anything like that? I posted on the grip board now, so it is up there. Um, okay. Excellent. No, I was just stuttering because I didn't know you could actually post a document on a YouTube description. Well, it'll be a link, and they can uh, oh, okay. they can they, they it'll be active. They can click on it. So as long as right. it's shared somewhere. Um, so and if, if it's not, I can put it on my site. It doesn't matter. But uh, yep. I just wanted to make sure it was okay to share with everyone. It, it's it's a really, really cool document. James, you've had a chance to look over this thing a little bit? Yes, yes. It's extremely thorough, and I even noticed all the past years and, and everything on it. I think it's yeah. – uh, I, I really think it's amazing the way that you guys coordinate this international competition because that Thank is – uh, it's quite a symphony. Very cool. Dude, I – it's – it's crazy. Like, um, it's not the first one to be done, uh, like a multi-location contest, but it's definitely become the absolute best far and away that I've ever taken taken part in. So it, it really has become something special. Um, you you kind of outlined how you wanted to go with the call today, James. Why don't you kind of why don't you go ahead and do that? Because I'm actually suffering today from what's known as a hangover. Have you ever had a hangover? No. Oh. Well, no? a sharp professional co- broadcaster like myself would would never come on to a show such as this with a hangover, Jed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess yeah. that means that I'm not a sharp broadcaster, but that's okay. That's okay, dude. Well. But I'll tell you what. I'm sure there were some amazing things that went down last night with me and my buddies, and I'd love to tell you guys about them, but I don't remember them. They're gone. <laughs> so um, along with the, the quick outline that you gave me right before we started this recording. So uh, yeah. All right, well, but I'll it sounded like it. a good idea when you ran it by me before, so go ahead and run with it right now. Okay, so like, I think the first things that we should mention, obviously uh, you, you mentioned how Sarah won Queen Kong. Uh, that that Tanner Merkel, King Kong champion. Um, that's uh, I think uh, a lot of us had, you know, picked Tanner. At least had him in the top three. I thought that was that was great. He had a fantastic showing in yes, he pretty did. much oh every my gosh. event. Um, also, uh, 
I mean, it's funny because I saw the video posted of Lane Snook doing the Millennium Dumbbell, just like lifting it up over and over again. I forget how many repetitions he got, but I know he broke the record. Was it eight repetitions or more? more? I think it was eight. eight. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm just surprised, and I understand that Better had to travel this week, but I'm surprised with the videos that he posted that there was no one that posted a video of Lane Snook pulling – 259 pounds on the crusher. I mean, that, and we have uh, Mr. Fat Bastard Barbell Company himself on the phone. Andrew, did you think anyone was going to pull that kind of number, honestly? Lane, yeah, actually I had. After watching Lane last time start pulling reps with the world record, I suspected it was going about 255. Yeah. Now, so, now, the previous um, world record with, with that apparatus was to – it was Carl Myerscough, right, from last year? Um, man, it's changed so much over the years. Yeah, I think Mark Carl's had it last with a 106 kilogram. Yeah, yeah. So, and that was, you know, for our American listeners, that's what, 233, 34, somewhere in that range? Yeah, I'm doing a quick uh, – Converting this over into English units. <laughs> well, usually we have Alan, and Alan is a whiz when it comes uh, to uh, converting 233 pounds to kilograms. Two thirty three point seven. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, to break a world record with so many incredible lifters, you know, Jed included on Tick Bar, you know, so many incredible lifters that 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 have humongous hands, unbelievably mm-hmm. strong Tick Bar and wrists. To break that record by that much is just, I don't know, to me it was mind-blowing. And I was uh, scouring the Internet for a video of it because, to me, aside from Tanner, you know, being King Kong overall at his body weight, that, that was the most impressive number that I saw or the impressive thing that I saw. Well, and when you look at the crusher, it's, the world record has been set at King Kong for four years in a row now. Yeah. Like, if you would have told me, you know, three, four years ago that people would be pulling 250 on it, I would have just been like, yeah, right, that ain't happening. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I didn't think so either. I mean, I had a few guys in mind that I always thought it would be cool to see them, you know, get their hands on a crusher, like uh, well, Mark mm-hmm. Felix or, or um, you know, a Rich Williams, somebody like that, but... But to see Lane put that number up, especially in a competition, you know, and especially in the biggest competition, I just was, I was blown away by that number. I mean, I expected him uh, to break the record, but I, don't, I just didn't expect that number. That, that just, that really blew my mind. Well, now here's the scary thing, though. He was sandbagging the contest so he could do the Millennium Dumbbell record. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even, yeah. like, he didn't even... He took- he, he, like, skipped around and was, like, he did, like, a token lift and then went, went right for the world record on the flask or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So. Didn't want to be tired out for it. Lane. <clears throat> wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, so Lane Snook, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, Lane didn't figure in the overall, and I think a lot of it was because he was, like you guys said, sandbagging so he could set that Millennium Bell record, which was, more important to them, to him it sounded like. But, uh, you know, if you look at the overall, I don't think anybody would have been surprised with the top two, with Tanner and, and Yessi overall. But um, Gil, not that, look, I mean, I think if Gil didn't have surgery last year, I think nobody would have been surprised by his showing. But I was certainly surprised that, that Gil had placed as high as he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a little shocked too. I didn't think his was- I mean, I knew he's capable, but, you know, he's come back. He's bounced back from surgery fast. Yeah, and, and Gil had uh, set the record on the shallow hub at this event, on the, uh, the dumb hub. Yes, Jed? The dumb yes. hub, is that pronunciation? That's correct? right, yes. Okay. Dumb hub. And then uh, over in the place, this is Jed Johnson. Are you, uh, were you happy with that? I mean, last week you and I and, and Alan were on the phone. Um, 
basically just waiting for these uh, results to come out, and they hadn't yet. Right. And um, I remember you had gotten an email from somebody who thought you had had a podium finish from, but it was an email from, I guess, the results last year. Yeah, you never they did disclose who that was. Yeah, it was a client of mine, and he had he had Googled the results, and something popped wow. up that Luke had posted. And I think last year I might have been in third place, so he uh, assumed that that's what happened this year, but it was actually last year's results. So. Yeah. Um, I thought so. I thought the little bighorn was gonna cause me a lot more problems than it than it actually did. I guess I came in 18th place. Um, the three people that came in before me, Tanner came in first place on the little bighorn. Yes, I came in sixth. In second place over the overall, and then in third of the overall, Gill came in third. So yeah. <clears throat> while it while my 18th place finish. <clears throat> didn't hurt my overall standings as bad as I thought. Um, it still hurt quite a bit. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, did you Gil, do a lot of what ifs afterwards? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know what I haven't gone through. I still haven't gone through all the results to see, but I mean, the only other attempt I took was twice at 220. So I don't know if that would have brought me up at all, but certainly wouldn't have been enough. Um, but, um, but Gil, is really uh he's extremely talented on the on the hubs. So yep. he's he's done a lot of great stuff on hubs, not only hub implements but also true plate hubs. Definitely. Um in fact he rep he basically replicated the Brian Shaw hub challenge that Brian first came out with about a year or excuse me, two years ago. Um I remember that. Yeah, with that with that very low profile York plate. Um, yep. with five, I believe it was 15 pounds, three fives added around the circumference of the plate. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so it was the steak dinner hub challenge. And Gil is the only person I've seen that's that's been able to, to do it. I think the only reason why that he wasn't recognized for it was because he didn't have an actual York plate. It was It was some kind of like a replica plate or something with the same types of dimensions and measurements. Oh. Um, wow. But aside from that, he's also um, either number one or number two on the bull ring, which is um, an implement that I kind of created to train both for wide hubs and your extensors. And he's yeah. done, I think, over 60 pounds on that, which is ridiculous. Yeah. So... Um, with his hand size, he's able to negate any kind of disadvantage he would have at being a lower body weight. So, um, and the hubs present no no problem to him whatsoever. So yeah. he was he he came in first place on that. He was able to chip away at you know I would say he was at kind of a def- deficit after the crusher because he finished tenth at the the flask and twenty first at the crusher. So. Um, just the, that just that's just a total right there of 22 points. So at that point, yeah. at that point in the contest, Tanner's at 18, Yesse's at um, 15 total points after the two events. Gill's at uh, 31 already. I don't know what I said earlier. I think I said 22, but it's actually um, 31, and I was at 14. So after yeah. the first two events, I'm actually in the lead there. And then yeah. the hub starts to kind of turn that momentum the other way, and then the little bighorn finally just kills any kind of momentum that I had at all. So that's kind of uh, – that's a, Yeah, that's, that's another lift that Gil is, is, is exceptional at, too. Any yes. of those vertical lifts vertical, yeah. he's very good at. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, he's always been able to perform well at what I call vertical support. Um, other people may have other names, but you're looking at vertical bars and hub implement, or excuse me, not hub, um, anvil style implements, cone shape implements, all that stuff. It's really yeah. the same kind of stuff that uh, that Luke is extraordinary at as well. So, indeed, um, yeah. So he was able to. Uh, it, Gil's a perennial favorite in any contest that he does. So um, there was no surprise seeing him in the in the top five, let alone the top 
or yeah, top three. So, uh, okay, fantastic job. All right, I, I, was, uh, I think I was surprised because just looking at Gill before surgery and looking at him now, he doesn't look. I guess he just doesn't look physically the same, and, mm-hmm. and maybe it's just he's he's still kind of recovering. He's still getting himself back into to form, where, or maybe yeah. he wants to keep his body weight where it is because right. he just he looks a lot, you know, thinner, leaner. Yeah. You know, not you know, and that doesn't necessarily. I mean, gosh, I, I know a lot of people who said that they've lost weight and it's actually helped them in grip. So, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you know, I mean, yeah, well, I, I wouldn't say it shocked me. But, so I don't know. But I was a little I, surprised. I know that Gil came from a climbing background, but yeah. uh, I, I remember when he first started, he was he was very very dense, like muscular wise. So, um, and yeah. I remember he had to cut down the first contest that he the first nationals that he came to. I remember he had to cut weight just to get into the the 93 kilo class. So I think maybe maybe for a while he was like a natural um, maybe 210, like walking around at 210. Yeah. Yeah, and then over the years, yeah. yeah, he's whittled away at that a little bit. So now he's like more comfortably in that weight class. Yeah. And I would like to say rounding out the, the, the top five was Hari Talonen. Who again, to me, not a surprise at all to see no. to see him there. Yeah, dude. It's, it's on, on a worldwide stage, I mean, that guy is that guy's always up there. Uh, multiple world records and several different implements. Pinching is yeah. his forte. Um, yeah, uh, it's just just so, awesome. So, so I would have to ask you though, just because I know you know you missed 125 on the flash, and we talked about that. Yeah, and. I'm sure there was a part of you thinking that what you did was obviously a good lift. You knew you knew you were going to be up near the top in the class, but mm-hmm. did you think that you would be above Yesi Pinion? No, no, I, I didn't. I, I figured for sure, I figured for sure he would be up above there. And I, and I don't remember. I think he did tell me what his attempts were, and if we had time, I could probably go back and, and dig him up. But it really goes down to it all comes down to the competition lifts are the ones that matter. And, yeah. you know, I mean, <clears throat> even in living legends training, Andrew, I was, I was doing 270, 275 pounds on that anvil. And then, you know, day of, I'm only in like the two forties. Um, yes, I was doing, I know he did like 130 or something like that in training. And then he only managed, you know, something like 110 or 112 or something in the contest. Uh, it's, it's just what happens sometimes. So yeah. for me, um, I think I needed, I think I was just doing so much for so long. I think I just needed extra time to get back into top shape and with a little extended deload, it just, it, everything came together for me for the flask because my training for flask was absolutely rotten. It was terrible. I, I haven't done 120 plus in training for a legal lift, I mean, since probably 2018, and I've only was able to break it off the ground in like one session, and that was like a, the first session after Living Legends. So, oh, wow. yeah, and I'm a momentum yeah. guy. Like from baseball, even playing baseball, if I like struck out my first at bat, then there was a pretty good chance that I'd go 0 for 4 on that day. But if I got a base yeah. hit, then I'd probably go something like <laughs> 3 for 4 or 4 for 4. So see, yeah, I was the opposite. I just, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's so, so often I would show up at events. I'd show up at games baseball wise and I'd be like so loose early in the game and joking around that my coach would be mad at me. Huh. But then it took me something like striking out to get me Wake pissed off enough to, to really play. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which I think is carried over now. Like I go to events and I don't know, everybody tells me I'm too loose and having too much fun, but you know, I don't Interesting. know. Yeah. <laughs> There's, but, have you uh, have you uh, have you have you guys gone down and looked at uh, um, like say the top twenty? Like there's there's some names yeah. in here that like I don't know who the, some of these people are. Like the, Ushenko Artem, I'm assuming is from the the Russian uh, competitors. I, I don't know. I don't know who that is. Pupench, Pupchenko Ivan. I don't know who that is either. Now, I mean, oh, yeah. these names could have been in there every yeah. single year since 2013, 
and I just don't remember? Well, or they're brand new. Well, I don't know. Well, I can give you a little background. The Russian names always give me a little bit of a headache because sometimes I get them back with their surname first and their yeah. um, first name second, and me being an American, as ignorant as I am, I can't tell the difference. Yeah. Or occasionally one year I got it back in Cyrillic, so I had to do the translation back. So, oh boy. yeah, these are very potentially names we've seen in the past, but I also wouldn't recognize them. Okay. Yeah. But well, and then there's also, said, I mean, there's also uh, – Joel, Joel Dirks made the top ten, which I know he's yeah. competed before. I'm not saying he's a no namer by any means, but I mean he's he's a force to be reckoned with. We got Devin Lee Brown on there, which we've talked about yeah. multiple times. Um, Who that's I must- actually thought, yeah. I thought he would have been sort of the pound for pound guy, but I'm, I'm seeing here the, the exceptional lifter uh, yeah. was uh, Eves Gravel. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Christopher Tracy. I believe this was his yep. first contest, and his wife um, will be commenting. Or... Yes, yes, she and that's that's <laughs> cool that she does. I'm glad that she yeah, does. Yeah. Um, please continue to do so. Um, but yeah. uh, I mean, I I think he he has some amazing potential. Like yeah. the, the the dude's got a a good strong build on him. Looks like he's got decent sized hands, and he puts in the work. And I think he's got a good head on his shoulders too, because of, uh, just just by looking at what he does in his training, it's like he he does uh, you know next level kind of thinking for for his training. Who's this Grant Thompson guys? Do we, do we know who this he, guy is? Well, well, that's why I wish we had Alan on the phone because uh, that's Alan's guy. Because I actually yeah. contacted Alan when I was reading through the scores and went, "Is this real?" Okay. Because <laughs> oftentimes it, you, when I'm doing the scores. I'm kind of doing a bit of a spot check as I go. Yeah. You know, does this make sense type of stuff. Right, because maybe it was actually kilos and got labeled pounds or right. something like that, one of those right. deals. And, yep. So when I see an anomaly, like a name I don't see, recognize pulling, you know, top-level lifts, I'm like, whoa, who is this guy? Like, okay. Carl so that's, Myers- that's, off that's the dude that did, like, of 115 on the, on the flask then, right? Yeah. 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 The, and yeah. it looked like He's he was he video. had, like, 70 more pounds yeah. on him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Not to derail, guy. but Judd, you can comment on this. When you've got 212 men competing for the top slot, mm-hmm. you've got four lifts for the whole contest for each event. Yeah. Honestly, I'd say anyone in the top 20 has a shot at it, based on the attempts that are taken, the mistakes that are made, and where the you know fractions of a pound split the points. Yeah. It becomes sure. real yeah. tricky. Oh, dude, it's fraction. Yeah, absolutely, fractions of a pound. Oh, yeah. And 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 I was t- I told everybody at my contest, and and I don't know if this needs to be in the rules, Andrew. I'm not making that as mm-hmm. a suggestion, but I, like the contest is long enough, so I tell people there's a minimum jump for your first three jumps, and then on the fourth one, you can take whatever you want to. Especially, it, or the only exception is if you're going for a weight class record and you need to make a smaller jump on like your third mm-hmm. attempt, then I'll allow it. So like, and where does that come in? That that, that well, my rule actually screwed me over big time because I would have taken smaller jumps on my third attempts if I could have, mm-hmm. and I didn't. I ended up taking five and ten pound jumps on stuff because that's what that's what I was requiring of everybody else. So. Um, and I, it's, it's not a. I'm not trying to make another rule for the contest. The, the rules are great the way they are, but um. No, I don't that know would what, fall I, under what we would call like suggestions and yeah. um, promoter rules. Like at my right. place, like if I have four guys show up, oh my gosh, it's more of a drinking party than a contest. I mean, mm. we're all BS and having <laughs> fun. We'll pull out fractional plates. It'll yeah. get stupid. But I've also had one year where I had 15 people show up, and I ran that like I ran legends almost militaristic, you go, you go, you go. These are the yeah. jumps, no debates. Right. Move, move, move. Yeah. So it all depends. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. So. Four or uh, five guys mm-hmm. drinking and joking around. That sounds like a pickup artist training mm-hmm. day. Yeah. So, Pretty much. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can relate. I relate very closely yep. to this. I think, yeah. if, I think if Luke competes in Wailusing, I think he's – I think he's top five, and it, it oh, might yeah. have been, it might have come down to a battle between where I finished and where he finished. Like he and I might have been 
tussling. Um, Why do you say that? Just because the equipment was more familiar? Yeah, the, mm-hmm. his flask was off, his uh, his hub was off, the crusher. I think he I think he actually lifts better than what he ended up getting on the crusher, and you know maybe he even adds like a couple more pounds to his little bighorn. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he, fin- be he got sixteen and a half. I'm going to slide down because I, 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 what did he get? One hundred five on the on the flask. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah. He's dude. He he beat me in training every single day we trained. Every single day. Yeah. So I don't I don't know what flask they used. Um, well, that's the flask too, Jed. I mean, that's the flask. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the story of the flask. It is. Not even there. He is. is. He got he got forty seven and a half kilos. I got fifty four point seven. So, um, yeah, dude. No, I mean, he 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 should have had fifty, which would have put him up with Yoni. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, but, did you want to go over the, uh, the the top three in each weight class? Dude, we can go over whatever you want to. Whatever okay. you, whatever you guys want to, I just want to make sure we go over some of that uh, rules document. I actually forgot that we didn't cover the results of the King Kong yet. I was thinking we did yeah, that last well, week, but but they weren't. No, out yet. no, I just I, I thought it would be important that we did because yeah, let's do know, that. People, okay, yeah. all right. So I have to go over them pretty quick, but uh, in the uh, 120 I, I plus one. kilogram class, you had uh, Yessi Pinion in first. You had uh, Jed in second. And Artem Yushchenko in third. Um, in the 120 class, you had Hari Talunin in first. Serpo Peterman, who he also had a really great day in second. And uh, Christopher Tracy in third. That's fantastic for him. Um, 105, you had your King Kong uh, winner. Tana excuse Hunter. me, one second, one second. Because um, I know that this question was asked. Andrew, yeah. with the scoring of the weight classes, you're not just taking the people that are in order of the finals, right? You're, you're comparing no, no, no. the performances just within the class, correct? Just within the class, correct. Because yes. that's why back in 2016, I'll, I'll degrade you for, oh, degrade you for a second. 2016, Gil Goodman won the overall King Kong, but Cody Burns won the 93 class, and mm-hmm. Gil took second. And that's because when you take the scoring of the entire group versus just the class, yeah. With the reverse straw man, the points can work out different. That's right. Thank you for that clarification mm-hmm. real quick. Go ahead, James. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. So you had, uh, you had Tanner in first at 105, and he was your King Kong. Uh, you had uh, Ivan Krivik in second, and uh, Eric Rusin in third. Um, at 93K, you had Gil Goodman in first place, Devin Lee Brown in second, and I'm going to go for this name. Wish me luck, Judd. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna, third place, Stan Mahunen. No, I don't, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, dude. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That was a great buzzer, Judd. <laughs> whatever you said, I was buzzing the hell out of it. There's, there know. was no I chance know. for silence after that. I there was definitely not going to be an applause. <laughs> It was fantastic. It was. Uh, I hearkened back to the family feud. Thank you. <laughs> so, so uh, where do we leave off? Uh, it was at uh, 83. 93. So, in the 83 kilogram oh. class, in first place we had Timo Vladimir. Uh, second place, gosh, why? Nico <laughs> Julian. And in third place, Mikhail Rupkin. That sounds about go. right. Those guys. Those those names. Okay. Sounds great, brother. I'm good. Fantastic. Okay, and uh, it's 74 kilograms. Uh, is I don't think we uh, had any doubt about that. Um, in second place, Roman Dubovich. And in third place, Tuamo Karpin. Excellent. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah, I think that's it. And then uh, in 66 kilograms, our old friend Jerome Bloom. No surprise there. Um, Evgeny Zakula in second, and Dmitry Gumanidi. Gumanidi? Yeah, that in third. And then at uh, 59 kilograms, first place winner, Liman Vladislav, and second place, Christopher Oka. 
And, and third, our good friend Robert Najedli, our, our Masters winner was Arto Jeronen, no surprise there. Our main man, Mike Rinderly in second place, uh, Steve Millard in third in the Masters. We mentioned how Queen Kong was Sarah Chapelo. Second overall for women was Hilda Holtabu. Uh, third, Patricia Luxner, no surprise there. Fourth place, Lorna Patton, and fifth place, Marja Lari. Probably got that last one wrong. So, was she at the Arnold? Those. Was she at the Arnold, Andrew? It seems like I recognize that name. Do you the know? name sounds familiar. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. It is. I, I almost want to say that she's uh, finished and she was uh, run, you know, in the group with. Uh, Arto and Ari. Yeah. So um, I'm not seeing on the sheet that uh, Andrew sent the um, the list of the individual events. Is um, that up there? Higher. Or am I just missing it? Up at the top, I got the top lifters for each event. So oh, okay. this year. Uh, uh, places for each event and, and give some numbers, Jeff? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do that. Okay. So now we're transitioning over to the historical we record sheet. Women's classes what? quick. We missed the women's weight classes. I've got them right here if you want me to hit them, James. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, so... Um, the women's 84 kilogram class, hold on, women's 84 plus kilogram, first place, Sarah Chapelo, second, Lorna Patton, third, Maria Lari. In the women's 84 kilogram, it was Hilda Holtabu, Patricia Luxner, and Sarah Saffel. In the women's 72 kilogram, Yane Grondolin, Sini Yularakola, and Kobzar Oksana. There you go. And I believe now we're back into the men. So there we go. We got them all. So did you want to go over uh, the results for each um, event? Sure. We can. All right. So let's start with the flat. First place, Jed Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. With a lift of 52.5 kilograms, Yuffie yes, Pinion with 52.42 kilograms. That was good enough for third. Tanner Merkel in um, fourth with 52 kilograms on the nose. And in fifth place, Artem Yushchenko with a 50.5 kilogram. If you uh, look at that list, is there anybody that stands out to you guys? On, uh, on the flask? Yeah. This no this this guy that no one has ever heard before, this Grant guy. Yeah. Just yeah, out of I nowhere. Say, I, I, yeah, you tagged me in that post and and I basically just uh, replied back to him, yeah, you just need to take two fifty five, you know, two twenty five K plates, slap them together and throw a little track on them and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Any any time fifty kilograms on the uh, flask goes up, it's a good day for the two twenty fives pinch. Seems to be a really really strong correlation there. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. indeed. So um, on to the uh, crusher. Yes. Crusher. Yep. Crusher. Okay. So Lane Snook, obviously world record one seventeen point seven five kilograms. That is amazing. Um, all the way behind him in second place, even though this lift is amazing, 110.04 kilograms, Igor Kapinski. Um, in third place with a lift of 100.62 kilograms, Artem Yushchenko. Tanner Merkel with 100 kilograms on the nose. And Ivan Krivik with a lift of 99.9 kilograms just behind Tanner in fifth place. So um, can you guys think of somebody who, who really stood out uh, with their crusher lifts? Maybe somebody I didn't mention? 
question? Um, well, I know that uh, I think for a lot of people, Devin Lee Brown was probably a surprise seeing that happen. Yeah. Um, and I know he probably weighs close to 100 pounds less than Joel Dirks. So, yeah. Um, but again, I mean, his hands are enormous. So when you, when you have that hand size, it's going to negate a lot of that body weight differential. Yep, absolutely. That's the one thing, you know, when people talk about hand songs, and you trust me, I know, i got little hands, and sometimes it definitely feels like it's a disadvantage, and it is. You know, it doesn't mean that you can't look at down to, you know, like a Gil or a Tanner or a Devin Lee who have bigger hands and say, so, <laughs> man, that's extreme. You know yeah. I mean? Well, I guess... I guess it, it doesn't surprise me, but uh, Yves Gravel, only because I know his hands are as small as mine and yours. I mean, yeah, yeah, I know. There's, oh. I know. That's the, <laughs> yeah. I heard that. I heard he was like sub seven and a half inch hands. Yeah. That lift got, of his on the inch. Yeah, we have no excuse anymore after that. You ruined it for us. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not that we don't have an excuse. I mean, there's always going to be aliens out there, you know? Yeah. We there's there's freaks out there. They walk among us. You know? you know, you know. There's a name here, guys, that uh, jumps out at me, and I would have anticipated more weight from him just based on some of the other stuff he's done. Do you know this Jay Smith? He competes yeah, out in the yeah, spot. From that, uh, yeah, he compete, he yeah. He competes out in the spot where uh, Jason Steves runs yeah. up. Yeah. That's yeah. a low. I mean, I, I would I would expect a higher number from him. I'm wondering if maybe he made a tactical error and made too big of a jump. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, he he's pulled huge numbers on Axel. Mm. He does a lot of really cool strongman stuff, and and mm. and if you you follow him on Instagram, he does the you know a lot of Highland Games stuff too. He's just an yeah. Really strong guy. He even arm wrestles. And he does uh, silver bullet holds for like ten plus seconds with like number four. Equivalent yeah. grippers, so Oof. Yeah, big super boy. Strong guy. Super strong. Yeah. Shall we move on to the dub hub? Dumb hub. Dumb hub. Sorry, yeah, the dumb hub. My pronunciation is off. It's all of those uh, Russian names. Yeah, your tongue is a little tired now. That's okay. <laughs> so, obviously, we had Joe Goodman with uh, the record, the world record on that, with 35.25 kilograms in first place. Um, Mikhail Ripkin, 34.02 kilograms on that. Um, Big are you guys familiar with that name? No. No. No clue. Yeah, I wasn't either, and I saw that number, and I was like, wow, that's a lot. You know? <laughs> uh, he took second place. Uh, UNCPU with 33.24 kilograms in third Mr. Napalm, Jed Johnson in fourth with 33.03 kilograms. And Tanner Merkel, just a pubic hair below Jed Johnson at 33 kilograms even in fifth place. That's where, that's, a, that's a, an example of calibrated plates just totally clapping your cheeks, man. That, look at that, yeah. 33 <laughs> kilograms on the dot. Getting beat by thirty three point zero three, brother. Yeah. That's a tip for King Kong. I yeah. would tell you, everybody, don't ever calibrate your rig to an even kilogram. That'll always bite you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Don't, don't go there. <laughs> Dude, I take advantage anywhere I can. Right there it is. Yeah. Point yeah, zero I mean, three, a, man. <laughs> yeah, you throw a tenth of a kilo on there, nobody will know the difference, and it makes a world of difference. Yep. 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 Yeah. That's cool. It of course, there, and then, yes, they got me by point one nine. So, mm -hmm. bastard. That's that's just uh, not right. That's not fair, right there. That's not yeah. fair. Having two plates that are point one nine a piece. That's not fair. Point zero three difference. Totally fair. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call him out just because he's a friend of mine. And he totally did something I would do in the lift like that. Robert and Jelly just went and put like ten kilograms on there and just looked at that. What did he do? Robert and he, Robert and Judgley did what? Ten kilograms on there and lifted that. <laughs> he was probably like, "What is this stupid thing? Let me just you know. right. Let me just get on the board with something." Yeah. You know? There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Anybody else you can think of uh, with their shallow, dumb hub numbers that uh, might have stood out to you? Not really. Yeah. Uh, what did Mikhail Christopher Tracy Russia. end up getting? Where, where did he stay? Stand. Um, let's see, Chris Tracy. I'm gonna have to scroll a little bit here. Man, he's down there. Uh, he must yeah, have had no, an off day. Okay, so four, five, six. Uh, seventh place. Oh, he's seventh. Yeah. Oh, I oh okay. I already went past him. Okay, okay, no wonder I didn't see him. I, I'm down in like fortieth place. I'm like, what the heck happened here? Well, yeah, I had to scroll up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There he is. And then, yep. uh, yeah, Circo finished. Circo Peterman finished just above him, 0.1 kilogram above him in sixth place, uh, with 32.85 kilograms. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, shall we move on to the Bighorn? You know what is interesting that I keep seeing here, guys? Yoni Mahunen, Yoni Mahunen finished second place in King Kong two years in a row. And uh must be, I don't know, bad day or something like that. But, I mean, he finished, you know, I think down in like 20th place or something like that this year. Oh. Maybe a combination of just not his events or injuries. I, mean, I, I know that – wasn't he wearing a wrist, uh, a wrist brace for a while? on his, yeah, on his Instagram that, videos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. Because so. you know, I remember we were talking about Flask, and I was talking about, you know, how he could definitely put up a big number, and you were saying, mm -hmm. yeah, he did something with his wrist. Yeah. Then I went back and I looked at some of his videos, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he does appear to have an injury. Yeah, buddy. So probably an off year for him. He'll be back stronger yeah. next year. So Little Bighorn, shall we? Little Bighorn. Let's, let's do right. Mr. World Record himself, Turner Merkel, with 115.75 kilograms. In second place, Ivan Krivik, 110.75 kilograms. So, wow, Tanner finishing five kilograms above everybody mm -hmm. else on that. That's a, it's a pretty big uh, lead. Uh, Gil yeah. Goodman in third with 110.6 kilograms. Timo Lodimus in fourth with 110.2. And Lucas Raymond, the going away favorite for this event. Yeah. This place with 108.5 kilograms. So I did the conversion. 115.75 is 255 pounds. That is just. That's Bananas. Six. That's 50 more pounds than I did. Or 45, yeah. I can't remember. But <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah. And That's pretty bananas. Luke's 108.5 times 2.2, 239. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that. Uh, that's 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 10 rep weight for him. That might be like 20 rep weight for him in a normal mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. Well, that's a lot. Of, so, uh, a any questions about Little Bighorn? Any guys that you saw that? Uh, Finished higher or lower than expected, or, or new names? Mm. Mm. No. Wow. You guys, I can doubt right. Enthusiasm um, coming off the of well, <laughs> I mean, Lucas surprised me. I expected him to be actually closer to second or third. Or first, okay. but you know, when you when yeah. you when you put in the jet lag and all that, he, I knew he was going through. It didn't surprise sure. me in the end. So yeah, I got a question for yeah. you. What What did you hear about Adam Glass's day? Any Any information come out on that? I see that he's a little bit lower than I expected here. I think he's done close we, to 250 pounds on the Adam, or excuse me, yeah. on the on the anvil horn. Well, yeah, you know, all of his numbers because uh, we were. It's funny. It's so funny that you mentioned that because we were we were at lunch today after training. There's the five of us, you know. We. We go to Sonny's Barbecue, and we, it's all you can eat, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and they just they see us coming, especially with Gary and Porkchop and Jason, and they're like, oh, gosh. They're like, damn it. These guys again. Damn it. Yeah, so, so we went there, and, and, uh, and we were going over some of the – we were just talking about King Kong, and, and Adam put up really respectable numbers in, in every event. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I think uh, – I, I want to say uh, Crusher – in terms of pounds, he was in the 190s somewhere. Um, I don't know how it, it would be. If well, you have a way to just bring up his numbers. Um, 
Not exactly. Ugh. Well, yeah, sort of. Hold on. I can pull this up. Sort yeah, of. I think he was like 90-something pounds on the flask, like 93, and he was in like the, he was like 190s on, on the crusher. Um, yeah. And then uh, I want to say his little bighorn. He was 87.5. Well, I can tell you he sliced his hand open on the flask and it right off the get-go. Oh. Did he really? So, yeah, he messaged me. He diced it real good. Oh, wow. That'll do it. Yep. Yep. That took uh, a nice Luke, chunk out of him. Luke also cut his thumb open on the, his second warm-up or something like that. Mm. Um, yeah. And uh, Mar- uh, Rindo literally had skin peeling off his thumbs, both thumbs, from the flask. But Rindo is such a man. I don't feel like that would be a big deal to him. Well, there was no blood. I, like I can tell just... you that. There was there was oh, no blood. Okay. I mean, a oh, four inch yeah. four inch piece of hide came off his thumb, and didn't bleed okay. one time. So, Adam, I feel like yeah. if Adam was, sent me if a picture, were... and it looked like oh, stitches worthy. Oh wow! Papers. Well, you see, yeah. Rindo, if it must have been from something else, because I was told you can't get your, get a cut on the flask, so the oh, flask doesn't cut you. I'm not going to tell you guys my awesome joke I came up with because you guys stepped on my line four times, so you guys can go fuck yourselves. But, uh, <laughs> you got Adam Glass's numbers there? <laughs> yeah, I got them up here. Okay. Um, sure. uh, 95 on the little bighorn, <laughs> 24 on the shallow hub. Um, he made me lose it on the crusher. <laughs> Uh, eighty-seven and a half and forty-two and a half on the flash. So I mean, they're all good numbers. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, you, you're all good. When you're dealing with wood cut skin, dude, you don't know what you're going to be. Well, able to do. yeah. And the depth of bench when you look at this contest, it's yeah, it, yeah. it, it hurts you in a contest like this. Big surprise for me, Lane Snook no lift on the little bighorn. Don't know if he failed. Gifted. Don't know if he just went no, right gifted. straight for sixty pounds over the world record. Who knows? No, he no left. He didn't wow. want to do it. Oh, he didn't and want to do it. Okay. Yeah, I messaged them on that right away. Gotcha. See if it was an error in the book. That's, nope. He wanted, so that's he the one that he it. skipped so that he could have plenty of energy left for the millennium. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. So, so Andrew, uh, yeah, you know, when before we came on the call, you were talking about sort of your your King Kong experience or non experience. Uh, it, it was something that we, we wanted to go through anyway. I don't know if sure. you're uh, you're comfortable going through it. It sounds like it was no. not exactly uh, the greatest experience for you, especially being one of the organizers. Yeah, no. Um, so my day job, I'm in the automotive supply industry. Um, I sell glue for a living, essentially, for lack of a better term. And um, okay. we had a three-week test cycle that we had to do at the uh, Jeep Cherokee plant in Illinois, and it got pulled ahead a week. So my, I had to leave the Friday before my venue was a go. So I actually didn't okay. get to participate in King Kong. Uh, Darren Shalman ran the event for me, and Jason Gonzalez was my only show. So while everybody was lifting that Saturday, I was in an auto plant. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, but, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, but, but it worked you know, out in the end because the one day I got off was the following Sunday, so I got to spend all day Sunday hugging it up in my hotel room, punching out scores on this. So, right, sure, it, it's sure. a full day, full day to knock the scores out, dude. I, I can't, yeah, I can't absolutely, yeah. can't even imagine, bro. I mean, just looking at the sheet and the detail and everything that Eric posted, I was like, my gosh. Mm-hmm. You know, it is no wonder why, you know, it's going to take a little while for for results to come out of something like that because, uh, my gosh, I mean, that's just – it really is like anyone who's put on any kind of large-scale score event can tell you that so much of the coordination is is, is just – it's maddening trying to get – it's like a symphony, yeah. you know, trying to get everything to, oh, to work right and to do it at so many different venues and to get everybody using the same equipment and – to make it as level a playing field as possible for everyone and to make sure that people aren't sharing videos of their lifts or, 
or any of oh. their scores or, or, or numbers. I mean, that, especially since the event is on different days. It's just it's such a phenomenal effort that you guys put in and, and an amazing feat that you pull off. So Thank you. And Absolutely. honestly, this year went very smooth. I mean, there's always something that comes up, and this year it didn't really happen. The worst I had was, and this is not, not a complaint. I mean, this is just the facts of life. When you've got 26 different spreadsheets coming your way, the littlest differences can sometimes throw me off. Like, uh, I'll pick on Jed since he's on the line. He puts his stuff out to the ninth decimal place. So I've got to go through and reformat that so everything then matches in the same format. Or some people use Microsoft Sheets, so then I have to convert it over into the same format of Excel. Or I get Excel 2003 or 98, and I've got to convert that around. <laughs> or one of the weird stuff is, or when people, uh, what was the other one? In Europe, they'll use commas instead of periods in you know, decimal places. So then I have to manually go in there and adjust all the numbers. Dude. Oh, wow. So, and again, wow. it's just the nature of the beast. What's with I never the thought about the commas versus periods before. That's that's a huge oh, yeah. point. Yeah, the because yeah. I'm sure the the Excels don't recognize that. They they don't just but automatically convert it. Thankfully, this year I didn't get any scores on a photograph of a napkin. <laughs> That's happened. <laughs> that has happened. Wow. Are you you've got to be kidding me? Who I, did that? I ain't going to give it away. Come on. i got to be polite. I'll tell you was it was out of your stuff. It wasn't me, dude. The second ever oh, contest. No, I know. The second ever <laughs> contest I went to, the second ever <laughs> contest I went to, the score sheet was a napkin. A napkin? That was a nice decimal point, but a napkin. And then they lost it. And then they lost it, bro. They lost it. <laughs> blew, blew out of the back of the pickup truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yep. Unbelievable. My oh, well. goodness. Yeah. Uh, so, so, I mean, I have a question just because, sure. you know, I, I mean, I, I, I definitely, uh, I'm impressed with the effort that, that you and Eric put in. I, I got to say one thing, though. Just, mm. you know. In my comically critical way, <laughs> who picks some of these events? Like, <laughs> the like how the these endless events debate changed? of the events. How do we decide um, on the stub or the, you know, the dumb hub? Like, how do we, like, this <laughs> Man, this could be a whole show in of itself. Um, I'll, try to, <laughs> I'll try to go through it pretty quick. So the first year, you've got to go back to 2013 when we first did our first King Kong. Okay. Me and Eric picked stuff that was just not contested at, at all at that point. We wanted to do something that was different. So that year it was the Euro, the one-handed yeah. axle, the Iron Mine Hub, and then the Little Bighorn. And okay. I think we had stumbled more or less on accident on a really good lineup of events. I love grippers, yeah. but you can't do grippers internationally across that many venues. It's been tried, I would argue, not well. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I could see where that would be a problem because yes. you got to go by ratings, and people's ratings are all over the place. And the and, debates and, that that would fire up, oh my! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's Pandora's box. It is. It's Pandora's box. So I can kind of go through this. I mean, eliminating the one-handed axle—that makes sense. That thing's a nightmare to judge if you've ever had to do it, and the axles are pricey, especially when you're trying to ship them into, say, like the Ukraine or Australia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're, you know, and, that's... And plus crossbars on axles are too feminine looking for tough guys. Sure. I think we well, established that, unfortunately. The crossbar that I came up with was specifically for the 2015 King Kong. Well, there you go. That, was, that didn't exist before, and it was a requirement for that year. And they've proliferated, okay. and now there's other versions out there, so we've eliminated that requirement. But that was the whole purpose well, of that tool. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about that, how that would, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, would, it would definitely, it, it would end a lot of the lockout debate, we'll put it that way. Well, but, uh, but yeah, I could see where And that it was, was an evolution. Question. Yeah. Because you had the one-handed Euro that first year, and the Euro was so easy, you bring it up to the knock bar and you're done. Yep. The axle, the hub, and the little bighorn, those were all difficult to judge. So the, let's sure. put them all on the knock bar. Yep. Then it was just a matter of yep. how to do that. 
So yeah. the Euro, that was evolved to the flask, um, mostly out of a combination of, one, it's a lightweight implement. It's easy to move around the world. It's fixed. Euros are pricey, um, especially when you're dealing with some of the overseas groups and newer promoters. That's where that came from. I've told everybody up front, I'm not a fan of the two and a quarter inch width. That sucker slices and dices me every time I look at it. Uh-huh. But it's also, some, when you're dealing with this many venues, you need cons- as best of consistency as you can get across as many locations as possible with convenience, which kind of puts you in a weird situation. Sure, yep. So then we've got uh, the Little Bighorn. As you know, that's gone back and forth over the years. You know, we started with the Little Bighorn. That worked fine. Then we moved into the 2-inch V-bar, which I lit- we pulled that out because you guys were pulling too big of numbers, frankly. <laughs> They're just getting too bloody big. I mean, when I'm starting yeah, to see okay. 340s and 350s fall, I'm starting to get concerned. You know, people yeah, are going to yeah. start getting hurt. You know, okay. I was like thinking we'd see a 400 V-bar at the rate we were going. So then that led to the jug, which the jug got a lot of hate that year from me. So we're like, okay, why don't we go back to the little bighorn? Everybody's got them. Well, well, let me ask you something. What what was the issue with the jug? Yeah, I never heard about that. Um, I do that yearly survey, and then I got a lot of private messages complaining about the jug. Mm. Okay. Uh, Okay, well, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd much rather lift on a jug than pull like the half penny or something <laughs> so sure so yeah so you know I, then the infamous event third event which is always you know I, honestly if everyone hates the third event i think i've done my job so <laughs> it started off as the hub yeah hold on i'll tell you the story so we started off as the hub then we had the controversy okay. of how does your fingers have to place oh god you know, and i got fed up with that argument i forgot so, all about yeah. that yeah oh man. yeah that was just a keep me up at night. So then we went to the shallow hub, which that was the same, similar, but better. Um, and the stub was punishment for all the shit I got for the subs, frankly. You <laughs> passive what it aggressive is. motherfucker. I am highly Thank passive you. aggressive. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll show these guys. Poor Jack. You guys shouldn't let me on the show if you don't want the truth. So. <laughs> no, I love the truth. I love the truth. Jed, so did you hear that? That's stub? why you had to lift on the stub. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring the stub back, bro. For a legitimate reason. You had no idea that it was payback. It was retribution. <laughs> it, okay, that, that's true. It also fits the bill of it's, you always need that third lift to be something to screw up everybody's plans. We hope we haven't screwed up your plans too greatly right now by breaking up this episode into two parts. What you need to do right now is subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when part two of episode 114 is ready to come your way. Do that right now, and we'll see you there in a couple days. See you, brother.